Hello everyone, Jesse Webb, Traders Pro. Market conditions remaining bullish in a bull market. We've been at the upper end of this range now for the last uh, four or five days. Momentum still in the bullish uptrending location. We've also got breadth, which is also in that bullish uptrending location. Not extreme, has pulled back into that upper trending range and then also sentiment still also in that um, upper range so uh, all all bullish conditions here uh, we do know that we're at the upper end of that range we've got this long-term bull market uh, which is sitting now at the at 13.5 on the upside as i mentioned before that number represents this line right here as it's moving this direction so this is our top down approach we're looking to see what is the overall direction of the market and in this case it has been moving higher and has been bullish since um, in this case april you know so really may 1st we've been moving higher where we've crossed over this line right here and we had been at you know all the way down to that negative 22 now we're on the upside swinging to this upper range now at that positive 13 so the overall range of this indicator uh, we're definitely towards the upper end of that range you can obviously kind of see that just here on this chart where we've had this s p 500 which has moved up very significantly and quickly and approaching some of these all-time highs uh, on s p 500 so the fact that we're still bullish and moving higher we have to have a little bit of caution here at these levels where we're starting to um, potentially top out. It's tough uh, when we re reach these resistance areas, we just start to get additional supply. There's nobody left to be buying into these. So we've got to have a little bit of caution here. The, um, the buy sell ratio still bullish, but now we're starting to get that three part uh, tick right here where we're looking to see, you know, we get that, that move higher, the initial move higher. And now these are starting to squeeze back together. Uh, also, just an indication of a little bit of caution, a little bit of warning right here at, at as market conditions are at all time highs or reaching all time highs. Sentiment is uh, not super extreme, but in that upper range and uh, and and moving lower. If we look at S&P 500, we've got SPY, which has been we had that, that really bearish in you know, bearish engulfing candlestick right here a couple of days ago. And we've just been stuck inside of that. So you can see this consolidation, real tight consolidation. Nobody's interested in buying or selling at these points. So we'll see which, uh, who wins the tug of war at this range and, um, and, uh, and just be, you know, be aware of where that is in that overall uptrend. We've had a decent run since this initial signal uh, and things continually moving higher. That just does not last forever. And uh, that, uh, again, however that means, whatever that means in terms of portfolio management, there's always going to be stocks that are rotating through uh, and that are opportunities. The location of the market just may mean the size of the positions that you want to take on or the number of positions that you want to take on uh, at these levels. Uh, let's take a look at, so one of the things I wanted to focus on, again, I get questions on this from time to time to where we're dealing with individual scans. So when, we're when we have the muscle stock scans and I talk about these, we have the new buy list. It's, it's a very, really broad based signal and we're, it, it ends up pulling in every single new buy that's in this list. So you get just a lot of stocks to look at. So as you're going through and doing your analysis and wanted to determine I'm looking for stocks that have, you know, this, that, or the other. You can go into the screener and you can determine and create a new scan. So I created a scan right here just the other day, just for an example. I've named it 95, 100, buy, not extreme, hold to buy. Okay, so in this case, I've got a 95 to 100 buy that's not extreme. What, it, what that means is let's take a stock like... Um, this one here, AEHR. So the extreme is when we have a stock that's gone all the way up into this upper range. When it gets up into this 250, 300 range, we know that this, that's not sustainable and ultimately a stock will pull back inside of this buy zone. So we've now got a, a list of stocks inside of that scan that can say, okay, I don't want to, I don't want anything that is extreme right now. So this is going to filter out anything that that's extreme. And it's going to have right now a setting of 95 to 100. And 
I can set those up just on these screen criteria here. So I'm going, going through and adding the various criteria. So in this case, I also have, you know, the market cap on this is 10 million, which is very, very low. So I could even adjust that and say, I don't want anything in here that's not, you know, that's not a mid cap or, or upper range of the small cap. So let's go to 500 million and we'll scan through. And I've got anything that's got a PE ratio of one or higher. So it's at least making money annual EPS quarter and sales growth. I set those at one just so it's, uh, it's, it's pulling in companies that at least are making money. They at least have a minimum level of growth. They're not negative uh, growth on there. Then the momentum range, this is the, when you get it to the upper above 140, that's the extreme range. So I've set it between 70 and 140. That's that buy zone. And so if we find those stocks now, again, I adjusted the market cap on that. So here you can see market cap. This is a $1 billion market cap stock, and it's got all positive green. Everything's green green inside of this. That's the that's the trend profile that we want to see something that's moving higher. In this case, it's had some consolidation and now it's potentially moving outside of that range. The more ideal location is going to be after a hold signal and I, and the, the the prime location is after a large and long counter trend and then we move back into that first buy signal and start that initial move. But as stocks are moving higher and you're looking either to get new ideas or you're looking to add into a position or you're looking for, you know, whatever you're looking for, the, the later that those stocks get into their trends and you pull up a one year chart and see how long that has been in that trend. You know, so potentially coming to the upper range of that, some of those breakouts may not work. And at the market being at the, the level that it is as well. So, but that being said, I can still sort through and I can look for some of these stock ideas that, that, that maybe fit my profile a little bit more. I'm looking for, you know, in this case, first solar, the one year chart, let's go into the, to the six month chart counter trend, uptrend, kind of an ugly looking chart right here with that big gap. I think they had some earnings, but it's just been pulling back. I mean, you know, I want a confirmation bar. So even though I'm inside of that buy zone and that buy range, I still want to have a solid confirmation bar, meaning I don't want to have any red bars here as we're moving back. Even though the up the, the uptrend is in place and we're inside of that buy zone, it's pulling back. I want to wait for a bar uh, or two that show me that it's going to start to find some support again. So I can still use some, you know, just traditional technical analysis when I'm looking at the actual uh, bar location. The signal locations are just that. They're locations. They're giving you analysis and, and, and discussing the trend and the direction. From there, I can decide a little bit more. I can fine tune a little bit more of my process of my entry. Uh, Meta, even. So here you can see Meta has had this real, Meta is the, um, formerly Facebook and or still Facebook, but just change the parent company name. And so now you've got this breakout and continuation. Same idea here, really nice profile, massive company in terms of market cap to 834 billion. So we know that they are a behemoth and they're, and they're trending higher. We're towards the upper end of that trend, but that scan can pull in those stocks that only, that I only want to really focus on. So as you're going through and you're determining, okay, I want to have, you know, in this case, all green up by not extreme at 10 billion or market cap or higher. Same story here is I can go in and I can look for those stocks. Now I've got this chart flip back over to candlesticks. If I want this visual representation of where the trend is at, then I can do that. If I don't like that, I can just turn that off and still know that where I'm at inside this overall profile is where I, um, uh, it is it, giving me the profile, the, at least the location, the, the timing that I want to be able to focus on for an individual stock like that. So just a couple ideas in terms of the screener. I've, we've, we've got a bunch of them are preset. There's 21 scans that have you know, a bunch of preset scans. So you can just quickly go in and glance and see if there's something that you're interested in or that has been working for you. You know, 50% sales growth, 50% EPS growth. So it's a these are companies that are growing significantly. This scan is set up, though, to just pull in everything. So you can see some stocks that are in uptrend or downtrends ranking high. You might have a one that's had this real big growth, 50% sales growth and the EPS growth, but it's a downtrend and a hold. I might be that might be of interest to me on this stock FLGC. I can go look at the chart. Now that's had a gap. It had a split. I'll have to get that updated and changed. If that doesn't, if that doesn't, um, if not, if that's not working for me, then I can go in. Let me just pull that in one more time here and look to see. 
Okay, we've got a stock that's in a hold, ADR. So that's, this stock may be one you can see when we talk about this color mess. This is not what we want to see. But if there's a stock in a, in a scan that I like and I want to be able to pull that in, but I want to keep an eye on it, let's change this back, then I can just add that to my watch list here and I can set up you know, just this watch list stock, add it to the stock, save and go to my watch list. Then from there, this is the one we added, I can just add an alert on that. So it's gone. When it goes from, it's currently a hold, when the signal changes from hold to buy, I want to get an email alert on it that night. Okay, so I've got that set up. So now there's nothing I, I have to necessarily do for this stock. It's set up in a watch list. I want this to be able to give me an email alert when it when that signal changes. And so now I'm a, a little bit more proactive. That's not very very good looking chart in terms of it having a possibility of moving back up. But I can now go in and, and uh, make those changes. Let's just take a quick look here at some of the new buys in the in the scan today. Uh, IRON, which is a um, medical biotech stock moving, has been a nice uptrend and been consolidating here and now potentially moving back towards that uptrend range. RYTM, a pretty big move here, 27%. A, really a bottoming stock, a real long-term bottoming pattern. This may be the early stages of a new uptrend. Could keep an eye on that. It's in this down, long-term downtrend and now breaking out and has a real big extreme momentum to the upside. So 323, 27%. That's one that I'd, that's one that I would just not be watching for quite yet. I'd be, I want to see that bar pull back into that buy zone. And uh, let's take a look at the next couple. R-E-L-Y, financial stock and ESAB, good solid breakout here, 7% uh, uptrend yesterday, breaking out of this move here, solid confirmation bar. 6% is, you know, that's reasonable for that initial stop loss. So you want that initial capital that goes into a trade to have the risk profile set up. So you've got a stop loss on it and you've got if, you, if you're looking to buy into that continuation or that potential continuation, then you've got uh, a reasonable risk profile set up for that kind of a stock. If I were to scan, uh, pull this out just a little bit to get a little bit more perspective and see where that's been at in the last year, you can see the uptrend, this long consolidation phase, and then breaking out again. So it's got a really nice history of uptrend, pullback, breakout, and continuation. A decent looking stock there too, uh, to consider. Uh, F O U R, an, another financial transaction stock. Again, a lot of these I don't know what they are or what they do. And you can simply, if you want more information on those, you can click on this more button, scan down. I've linked up to just a, a bunch of the other, you know, financial sites that are out there. You can do additional comparing or homework on some of those. I like to go to the news site just on Yahoo. You can scan down and see what exactly do these guys do. Payment processing. Um, omni-channel credit card acceptance like okay it's in that paypal type world and i can uh, just close that out get a get, get a decent idea of what's happening if there's a big if there's a big move on it i can go back and i can actually look to see what my you know what maybe some news items are on that click on that summary and see if there's anything interesting um, PayPal partner nears point ahead of earnings. Okay, so again, if you want additional information outside of just the flat out technical patterns and the trend direction, we've got links to some of that as well. A little bit longer of an update today, but that'll do it for today's update. Thanks very much and have a fantastic day.